It's a very meaningful word you hear often from Vietnam veteran Doyle Tolbert. He's a man who's dedicated his life to honoring those who made sacrifices to protect this country, especially those who die all alone, unclaimed, without a family to call their own. America Tonight's Michael Oku unearths the motivation behind this man who stands up for veterans who might otherwise be forgotten. On every Wednesday morning, every year for the past nine, without fail, Doyle Tolbert has been laying brothers and sisters to rest here. Ready? Okay. Paying tribute, along with dozens of other veterans, to the fallen and forgotten. Riverside National Cemetery is home to more than 225,000 veterans. Doyle, a former investigator with the L.A. County Coroner's Office, started his weekly trips to the cemetery after he noticed the number of veterans whose bodies were left unclaimed by next of kin, and as a result, went without proper burial. How can that happen? Why does that happen? And these men and women had served our country and they deserve better than that and so he gave them better and started the group veterans without family before you had this idea to honor unclaimed veterans what would happen to their remains uh, if nobody claimed them they would be uh, uh, cremated by the county and then the remains held for a couple of years and then after that they would be taken to the county cemetery and then uh, buried at that site with just a uh, marker on it saying the year of the year of the day of death though doyle had rarely met any of the veterans in life he made it his mission to honor them in death they needed to be sent out here and honored by being placed next to and with their brothers and sisters that they have served with. It sounds like this is not only for these folks, but it sounds like there's something cathartic for you, too. It's uh, our way of healing, maybe not ourselves, but fa our family members, or maybe they know somebody that didn't come home, and it's their way of honoring them. At 21, Doyle deployed to Vietnam as a paratrooper, and over three tours of duty, he was shot and wounded, and managed to live through a terrifying jungle ambush. Like many, Doyle left Southeast Asia with a dose of survivor's guilt. For the next 37 years, he worked in law enforcement, and today, his modesty hides a lifetime of stories. I don't know whether you want to talk about it, but your own mother abandoned you. That's, While your father was off fighting World War II. Being abandoned and then seeing these vets also abandoned. Maybe there's something there that says we're brothers and sisters. I, I, I don't know. It's been something that has always bothered me that these men and women should not be alone. Since 2008, Veterans Without Family has honored more than 3,500 veterans, each memorialized with a dog tag. Every man or woman who's brought out for burial, uh, is uh, a dog tag is made for them with their name on it, so we honor their memory that way from now until forever. There's one for Ronald Nieblitz, also a wounded Vietnam paratrooper, who found his way home after four years at war, but then quickly lost his way. Anna Cervantes is Ronald's cousin. They grew up together. Oh, he was happy-go-lucky kid, full of joy, laughter. Ronald was drafted in 1965. After he was hit by enemy fire, he received the Purple Heart. He survived his injuries, but returned to Southern California a changed man. He had to do things in the war that here we would have dreamed of them. Well, give me give me a sense of what that what he went through. He had to go and shoot 
sometimes women and children that he had no choice than to do it. And this haunted him? Yes. Back then, PTSD didn't have a name. Ronald married, but the union was short-lived. Did you ever see him like that on the streets? I couldn't. He drifted away and only saw his family occasionally. It was becoming more and more trouble, and it showed. I think it made it hard for him to live with himself because of the things he had done. And because of that, I don't think he liked to be sober very much. Nicole Lucas was Ronald's niece. Ronald lived with her family for a short time, but that didn't work out either. He wasn't happy, and I feel like that's why he took himself out of society and decided to become homeless. He didn't feel like he was worthy, I, I think, to be in regular society with the rest of us, you know. He stayed under the bridge um, on mission behind us, and he, he lived... Went, he lived under that bridge? Yeah, he lived under the bridge. Ronald Niebler a wounded war veteran, ended up here, some 40 miles away from where he grew up. Any memories come rushing back when you're standing underneath this bridge? Seeing so many homeless people, you know, it's like a lot of them were, you know, soldiers and, and veterans and people who just hit a hard time in life. And so it reminds me to be humble and, you know, that's for sure. And I do think of him often and I always wondered what happened to him. Ronald passed away under the Mission Bridge in August 2004. It would be four years before any loved ones learned of his death. And another six before he was laid in his final resting place, not far from the bridge he had made his home. Veterans without family learned of Ronald's story and made him one of their own. On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, a great nation. On another Wednesday morning in 2014, he was buried with full military honors, a service his niece Nicole was proud to attend. It kind of gave us closure, finally, you know, to know that he is okay and, and we he were had, able to honor him. He hadn't just been buried, he'd been buried with honors. Yes. Yeah, and we always felt he deserved that. When you heard that he had been buried and honored mm -hmm. by this organization, what was your reaction? Oh, I was, thank God. I was so happy that, that he did have his burial the way he should have had it. What does it mean for you to be able to give that man dignity in his death? It gives me a lot of pride a lot of uh, self-satisfaction knowing we're able to be there and give him his final military honors that he earned and deserved at the time of his burial. And there's no knowing how many other Ronald Nebluses might be out there. There's thousands. There's thousands. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Why does this matter so much to you? They're veterans. They gave part of their life to defend our rights as citizens of the United States, our freedom. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, our country is in mourning, a soldier died today. May you rest in peace. We are your family. Michael Oku, Al Jazeera, Riverside, California. That is a true honor. That's it for us here at America Tonight. Tell us what you think at aljazeera.com slash America Tonight. You can also talk to us on Twitter or Facebook and come back. We'll have more of America Tonight right here tomorrow.